our moms here in our uh, congregation. Um, yesterday, our team had asked me to, kind of before I have Pastor Daniel come and pray for the offering, that I just pray for the nation of India. And uh, you know, we all are aware of the situation that's going on, how uh, the COVID situation is escalating, getting worse. I just want to share on a personal level, uh, I do have family there. Uh, a few members have tested positive about like six months ago, so they're doing a lot better. Um, there are, uh, there is a church that, um, that I know where they had over 100 people pass away. And so it is very tragic. It's, it's uh, touching everyone. It's not uh, limited to one region or one demographic or one people. Everyone is being affected. And many of the um, issues that are arising are people basically congregating for political meetings, religious festivals, uh, politicians withholding uh, aid and saving it basically for themselves. So all this is just creating this huge storm that is just having a devastating effect on the community over there. So we're going to pray, but I also would uh, encourage you to pray as believers uh, yourselves. And so um, let's pray for the nation of India. Let's pray that God will continue to work on uh, the believers and the pastor's behalf over there. There are many churches, many pastors. My own, own, own uncle, who is a pastor in India, is having to visit families who are COVID positive to help them. So many pastors are themselves putting their lives at risk uh, to help people. So church, let's come together and pray. Father God, I just thank you for um, our moms. I thank you for Mother's Day, Lord. Thank you for the moms who uh, are here with us online, Lord. I pray that you will bless everyone here. Lord, we also want to lift up uh, the situation that's going on in India, Lord, with COVID, Lord. We pray, Father God, that as you mobilize uh, help and as you mobilize believers, Lord, I pray that they can be your hands and feet in this circumstance and in this situation. Holy Spirit, we pray in all wisdom and authority that you've given us that people will uh, just follow directions, Lord. But I pray that your holy, that your healing power will go out, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that churches will be just a lighthouse of hope to the people who are just dying, Lord. Lord and Father God, right now we just also lift up our church, Lord. We pray for our, um, our tithes and our offerings. Father God, I pray that as we sow into the kingdom of God, that we'll, it will be abundantly blessed as we build your kingdom here. And Holy Spirit, we ask all these things in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to invite Danny, Pastor Daniel. Good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day, of course. Um, we are also acquainted with the scripture in Exodus 20, verse 12, but I do want to refer that scripture today, but I want to refer to another scripture. If you have the Bible, turn with me to the book of Leviticus 19 and verse 3. The book of Leviticus 19 and verse 3. And this is while the scripture was written. It says, Every one of you shall revere his mother and father. Now, this time is the mother first. Okay? Leviticus 19 and verse 3. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, wonderful morning. All creation shall worship you and honor you and praise you. And this is what the word of the Lord has spoken and written, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And we want to praise you and exhort you and worship you. And we have found that written in the book of Revelation that all honor and blessing and riches and glory belongs to the Lord. And today, Lord, you shall receive all glory and all praises from your people. We praise you 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, come on. Mother's Day. Let us be joyful. Happy Mother's Day again. Hey, praise the Lord. Mothers are great. Amen. Amen. I, I always believe that like you are, you have your best moms. Right? You have great mothers. You have Excellent mothers, and they are great. I honestly believe that mothers are great. And so many things has been written about moms, and I'm totally in agreement. What you've read in the social media or in the air regarding mothers, how great they are, I totally come in agreement. You know, much has been spoken about mothers, and you know, how good mothers they are. They are very great. You know, the expression of their love, their sacrifices, their kindness, you know, their, their hard work, their, their care, their generosity, you know, how they have raised up the family. You know, in the Jewish uh, word, um, according to the Jewish word, the mom has the root word in, she is like, the bond of the family, right? It, and it is so true. You know, every home that has a mom, you will see there will be a greater bonding. Am I right, moms? <laughs> yes, you know, moms will actually bring the, the family together. I, I observe that quite a lot. You know, when my mom passed away uh, at a very early age, I see, you know, the the family, you know, seems like a little bit of distance. But when my mom was around, it's always a happy time, you know, a joyful time, a time of uh, people come back to see the mom. And, um, you know, I believe that moms, they are, they are the best, just like your mom. You know, I mean that you have the best mom. Amen. You know, I believe that in, in your heart, in your family, your, your mom is the best cook. Am I right, moms? Yes, the moms are the best cook. You know, they, 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 they offer the best lamb chop in the family. Yeah. <laughs> or beef stew. Or as simple as scrambled eggs, they prepare the best. And, and, or even kimchi, and I totally agree with you. Your mom make the best cheesecake in town. Yes. Yes, I believe that. When you say that, I believe that your mom make the best cheesecake in town. You know what? Whenever I spoke about, especially on Mother's Day, and when I speak about my mom, sometimes I get a little bit of sentimental, a little bit sentimental, or emotional because, you know, when, when I talk to my mom, when I talk about my mom, you know, she, she, she died, to me, she died too young to enjoy the fruit of her labor. She died at a very young age to me, like 58, uh, of cancer. So when somebody recovered from cancer, let me tell you, I rejoice so much. Amen. You know, particularly to Pastor Nico, uh, to Eric, you know, you know, even to Art, who are recovering. You know, I spoke to um, uh, Charles the other day when um, Marion dropped by, you know, on, on the afternoon. I managed to get hold of uh, Marion and went downstairs to say hi to Charles. First time seeing him and exchanged some words, and he was telling me he's recovering, he's getting better. And let me tell you, I rejoice in my heart so much. Amen. Because cancer has defeated my mom, but I'm seeing now God is defeating a lot of cancer. Amen. I rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Particularly for those who are recovering, for those who are having some sickness, let me tell you some good news. God is with you, and God will fight for you because the battle belongs to the Lord. Yeah. You know, as for my mom, you know, I remember, just like your mom, honestly, she has worked hard. She has, you know, raised a family of seven in my family. She is always there for us, to care for us. 
you know, she moved over from um, Hainan Island, you know, married my father, and she resided in Malaysia. She never got a chance to visit her homeland because of some political issues. In those days, Malaysians are not allowed to visit, you know, their homeland, you know, because of communism and now and political, you know, uh, afflations, and um, they say, you can't go back. So she, she never complains, you know. She raised a family of uh, seven. I always remember, you know, how she sacrificed for the family. Now, you know, in retrospect, you know, I began to understand why she always eat, you know, like the last in the family. Now I began to understand why she always eat the last in the family. She wants to see that in the children are well fed, you know, before she pick up, you know, uh, a chopstick or a plate to continue on with her dinner. That speaks volumes about parents and mom. Hallelujah. But today, um, I'd like to share a little bit about moms here, how the scripture, you know, speaks about mothers. They are so important. I believe that there are so many great things has been spoken about mothers, but I'd like to lay a few words you know, for all the moms here and for families and for those who are wanting to get married or parents-to-be in the future. There are three things that I'd like to share with you. Number one, the mothers, you know, you, you have a very important responsibility is that I see in the Scriptures, in the Scriptures, number one, as parents, especially mother, the first responsibility is that you must or we must lead our children or our child to faith in Jesus Christ. I want to read from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, when Paul was writing to Timothy, his spiritual son. And this is what it was written. Verse 5 tells us, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Louis, and your mother, and I am persuaded is in you, also. You know, Timothy's faith in Christ, I believe that was kind of a contributor to his mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Louis. To me, I see it as a, a generational faith that has been passed down from a generation to another generation. Just as in the read, when you read in the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I see it in this scripture that Timothy had faith in the Lord simply because of his mother Eunice and also because of his grandmother Louis. Moms, I tell you something. According to the word, I believe that mothers, you are the best evangelist. You are the best pastor. You are the best teacher to your child. I honestly believe that. Many years ago, I, I was, there was, I think it was close to 20 years ago when I was in, in Sri Lanka, um, doing a pastor conference with my pastors, the two my pastors, and uh, I was sharing about the importance of Sunday school or children's church, we call that, you know. I spoke, you know, under the, 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 the heavy heart about how that the Sunday schools are important or the children's church 
or the four twelve, whatever you call it, in different places. They, they are important, but beyond that, I was telling them that the most important growth or the influence of the child are the parents. They, they are the most influential people in the growing age. So I believe that in my heart, that moms or fathers, you, you are the best evangelist or pastor or teacher or counselor to your own children. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus spoke one word. He says, do not forbid the little children to enter into the kingdom of God. I see beyond, you know, the crowd wanting to bring the little kids, you know, to, to Jesus, to, to be blessed by Jesus. The apostle says, you know, don't bother, don't disturb our master. But Jesus was, you know, if you read the scripture in Mark chapter 10, verse 13, and Jesus was greatly displeased, displeased kind of upset, you know, and displeased, and say to the apostles, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. And verse 16, and he took them in his arms and laid hands on them and blessed them. As I told you before, you know, the, the moms, they wanted Jesus just to lay hands. But Jesus always do more than we, what we asked. You know, he, he brought the children, you know, he grabbed them and hold them up and, and just bless them. You know, I, I see it in such a, 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 a scenario that how Jesus loves children. Children, amen, hallelujah. You know, never reject our children, children to come, for such is the kingdom of God. So as parents, I believe as mom, especially in, based on this scripture, you know, how Louis influenced Eunice and Eunice influenced Timothy to be strong in the faith. You now, some must say that parental faith sanctifies a child, but personal faith, personal faith saves the child. In other words, that, you know, our children one day must come to their own own declaration in the heart that Jesus is the Lord of my life. They have to come to a personal faith. You know, growing up, you know, under the church or under our parents' influence and parents' faith, it is a blessing. But more than that, it will be a personal, you know, just as Jesus asked the disciples, you know, people can say many things about me or have different perception about me. What about you? What about you? What about the young people here like, you know, like Karen or Ryan or, or Grace? What about you? It will be like a personal faith. As Paul has spoken, you know, to Timothy, his spiritual son, you know, I saw the genuine faith. The genuine faith that is in you. And the faith that Timothy had was because of his mother and because of his grandmother. So I can see it here that it's so important that parents, we have a great responsibility to lead our children to faith in Christ. That is the first thing I saw in the book of Timothy. And secondly, you know, I see that uh, we, we must, as parents, as mother, we, we have to inspire, um, we have to instill God's word or God's truth to them when they are young. As parents, as especially mothers, we have to instill the truth of the Word of God when they are young. How so? Let's turn to the book of 2 Timothy, 
chapter 3 and verse 15. Now, of course, we know Paul, a writer, was writing to 1st and 2nd Timothy. He was writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. And he brought so many practical aspects. Not just only, you know, the spiritual things, but he was relating to us and communicating to us the importance how parents or spiritual parents you know, raising up a godly family. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, this is one Paul spoke that from childhood, he was referring to Timothy, that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Boom! Bingo! This is how the word of the Lord has been written, that from your childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, most of us know here, most of the learned people know here, that, you know, the, the zero years to seven years are the formation years of a child. You all know that, right? It is a child's development the cognitive development, the intellectual de development, the social de uh, development like brothers and sisters, how they relate with each other, the emotional development. You know, you got to tell them it's God's given emotions that we can laugh, we can cry. Then the physical development. And these are the formative years of a child which is so important. You know, I spoke to my sons. You know, when their son, you know, I, I told them, you are born male. I got to tell them, right? You are born a male. You are born a boy. And you shall be a man eventually. To my daughter, the same thing, you know. I spoke to her. You, you are born a female, right? You are a girl. You are a girl. Uh, you will grow up to become, you know, a lady in times to come. So these are the physical development you have to help them identify who they are. And apart from that, I add another one is the spiritual development. You can see that in the Bible again and again. The spiritual development. You know how in the book of Samuel, when he was like a very tender age, the mom Hannah had already made a vow. You know, if the Lord has blessed me, I will return this child to the Lord. And she kept her promise. And when Samuel was a very young age, he, he was brought into the temple and he grew up under the spiritual leadership of Eli. And that's where, you know, Samuel began to learn about the things of the Lord. And he began to hear that God was speaking to him. Amen? Right? Children, you know, God can speak to you. Let the child, God can speak to you. So, this is the spiritual development, which is so important, like instilling God's truth when, 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 when they are young. And this is how the scripture told us that, hey, that um, Samuel was, uh, uh, Paul was telling Timothy, that when you were young, the Lord has, you have been instilled, you have been brought, you have been taught with the word of the Lord. The Holy Scriptures was able to guide you and bless you. Now, having said that, you know, we have to be purposefully teaching them the truth. We have to be purposefully. It's not just like, you know, just bring Overly, you know, casually. I, I don't believe in that. Because when you look at the scripture, and I'm going to read to you in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, just listen carefully, it says that, you know, surely I have taught you statutes and judgment, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you should go to possess. 
Now, verse 6 tells us, chapter 4, verse 6, Therefore, be careful, be careful to observe them, observe all the commandments and statutes, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who will hear all these statutes, the people that surround you, the unbelievers, the ungodly nations. And they will see and say, surely this is a great nation, or this nation is great, and it's a wise and an understanding people. Because they observe, because they follow the commandments, because they have been taught in the word of the Lord, surely, you know, the nations that are surrounding us, you know, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Wow. This is how the word of the Lord has been instructed to us. Now, that is not the end here. But and you continue to read on to verse 7 to verse 9. He says, For one great nation is there that has got so near to it as the Lord our God is to us. And for whatever reason we may call upon him. And I jump on to verse 9. And it says that, hey, and you have to teach them to your children and your grandchildren. You know, God has kind of instructed the nation of Israel. These are the statutes, these are the commandments. If you walk within them, you will live. You will continue to prosper. You will continue to be blessed. And the surrounding nation will say, wow, man. And we are the people here, church, hallelujah. The people around us will say, man, do Christians, you are wise and you are understanding people. Amen. Would you be glad when people say it about you that we are wise? We are, in one sense, you know, the, we, are, we are wise, we are understanding, we know the time and the seasons. You know, the, the eyes of the people surrounding in this, in this area or the surrounding nations will see and observe. Why? Because we have been following the commandments of the Lord. And we're going to teach our children and our grandchildren. And all mothers will know these scriptures in, um, in, in Proverbs 22, verse 6. He says, train up a child in the way that he should go. So when he is old, he shall not depart away from it. you got to train up a child. Moms, you tell me how many times, you know, you have to do it to train your children. We call it potty train. <laughs> You know, don't pee on the bed. You know, that is the place to pee. You know, I saw my, my wife, I mean, doing that potty training when my child, they are so young, right? Like, I don't know, like, one year old, two years old, you're going to train them, you know, this is the area. <laughs> this is the potty that you train. You have to pee, not on your bed no more. You have to train them up when they are young, right? Mom, they are the wisest people. They will teach you a lot of things. Just as they say, mom will teach you about genetics. You are just like your father. <laughs> I'll teach you about contradictions, you know. You know shut your mouth and eat. <laughs> So many good things about mom. Honestly, I respect moms, and I always say my moms are always great. Hallelujah. They are the best on earth, right? But they, they are areas that, you know, we need to observe according to the scriptures here. That we got to purposely, purposefully teach them 
the truth. And not only that, you know, we got to be we kind of practically teach them the truth. Not only purposefully, but also practically. That the children will see that mom actually leave what they believe in. That they will see children, they grow, they pick up things. You know, they, they are very, a very clever bunch of people. You know, they are smart. Honestly, they are very smart. They see parents, you know, whether they are observing, whether they're doing, whether they are praying, whether they say what they actually believe. So in one sense, that, hey, I believe that Louis and Eunice, they have been, you know, walking, in one sense, practicing their faith in terms of loving, in terms of caring, in terms of honoring God, walking as like disciples of the world. So this is one aspect that I believe that we, we got to really show our children how, you know, to live like a Christians. As Jesus has spoken in, in the conclusion of his the Sermon of, on the Mount, on the Mount, it says that, hey, when you hear these commandments of the Lord, and if you do them, you are like a wise man who built the house on the rock. You know, and, um, and if you do not, then you are like a foolish man that built the house on the sand. So we, we got to instill the word of the Lord upon our children when they are at a very young age. I still remember, I still remember when I was um, in my earlier days when my, 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 when my youth, when my children are small, I'm talking about when they are like in their growing age, when they are like five years old, seven years old, six to seven years old. I was in Malaysia then. Our school starts very early in Malaysia. You know why? Because most schools, they have kind of a, what you call um, a, a two different grades coming at one different school because of a lack of schools. So they have what you call the morning session and the afternoon session. So normally, most of the students, they go early. Earlier session will be like from grade one to grade six. And then uh, from uh, grade seven to grade nine, normally they go to the afternoon class. So my children, when they are young, grade one to grade seven, um, they go to the school in the early in the morning because in the afternoon, another, another grade will come in to take over the, the classroom. So my children's class started at seven in the morning. It's early, right? Seven. So sometimes my mom, uh, my wife will help, and I will help. I still remember seven o'clock starts the school. From my house to the school, it's only about five minutes drive. But I told my kids, you know, we have a Bible lesson first every morning before they go to school. So I'll teach them the word. You know, I teach them. Not because I'm a pastor, but I believe that this is, I see the importance of the word of the Lord, you know, instilling into their life. If I'm not a pastor, if I know God, I will do the same thing. Not because I'm a pastor, always believe that. But I will teach them, I will teach them the story of Jacob, the story of Joseph. I cause them to memorize Psalms 23. They have to write all these scriptures and uh, just to memorize. And make it short, 10, 15 minutes and we are done but I do it every day. And as the, in the process, they grow up, and I'm so thankful for my children right now, or they're thankful to God. Why? Because they kept their faith. When they are young, they have been taught in the Scriptures. Just as Timothy was, uh, Paul was writing to Timothy, as they were young, they were taught in the Scriptures. Now, when you look at these Scriptures, Instilling the word of the Lord. 
is found in 1st, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you read through the entire chapter, why I say it, it is so important, because sometimes when you look at the scriptures, we have to look at the texture of the chapter. We have to look at what Paul was telling us. What is the theme? What is the importance of that chapter? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 tells us, in the last days, he was talking about in the last days, which we are now in the last days, that difficult times are coming to the earth. So when I teach, when I preach, I will always bring about the entire chapter that what Paul was trying to say to us. Of course, I can pick up the scriptures, say from your childhood, you were taught in this Holy Scriptures. But when you look to the entire chapter, Paul was telling us that, hey, in these last days, people will walk away from God. Chapter 3, verse 1, you know, people will be rebellious, boaster, proud, haters of God and haters of what is right. You know, people who are insolent, people who are just boastful, people who have, you know, the form of a religion but deny its power. So when Paul spoke about the end time scenario, then he began to you know, introduce or interject, hey, Timothy, you, you were strong because the word of the Lord has been grounded into your life. That's why you are able to withstand in the end times when there will be people shaking, people turning away from the faith, but you are yet still strong in the Lord. That is the texture, you know, that is the whole Chapter of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 16. Then he was telling us then how the word, the Holy Scriptures, is going to make you wise, you know, to make decisions in this end time. Because what we are facing today, it is difficult. Right? It is a difficult challenge today. You know, for us who are of, uh, who are, you know, people who are above 60s, you will understand what we are talking about, right? In comparing in those days, it is so free and easy. That's why, you know, people like Art and Phil, they have a lot of time in the church in earlier days. Am I right? You know, you come in, you know, you can do the church, you can do, but nowadays it's just different. Right. Those days, you can walk a mile to, to church. You can take a bus ride to church anytime because you are so excited. But nowadays, it's a bit different. Right. So, Paul was telling us about in this end time, there will be great challenges. Great challenges for the Christians because of the present age, the end time scenario, that people will be walking away and there will be a lot of shaking, but laying a foundation, a deep foundation for our children, they are able to withstand a greater challenge in time to come. Jesus was talking about laying a foundation in Matthew chapter 7. He also laying, talked about laying a foundation also in Matthew and uh, Luke chapter 6. He says, when you lay a foundation, you have to dig deep. Phil will tell us why you need to dig deep, you know, onto the earth. You know, the deeper you go in, the stronger you are going to withhold any shaking in time to come. That's about it. So, in other words, these scriptures has to be dug deep and laid deep into our heart because when the shaking comes, we are going to withstand and be strong. When the shaking comes, we will not fall. That's the whole purpose why Jesus used the word 
you have to dig deep because the temptation, the shaking will come. Well, you know, this truth is going to set us free. Of course, we know the word is the truth. As mothers, as I told you earlier on, you are the best teacher and the best pastor and the best, best counselor or the best evangelist to your children. I always believe this statement. An ounce of motherhood is worth a pound of clergy. It is so true. Your influence over your child is much more greater than my influence. That's for sure. You spend 24-7. Your children come from the very loins of your body, the womb of your body. They know you, you know, more than they know me. An ounce of motherhood is worth a pound of clergy. Instilling God's word when they are young. And lastly, we we gone to inspire them to honor Christ. We got to inspire them to honor Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, Paul was talking to young Timothy. He says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Therefore, Timothy, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Son, I tell my children, you need to be proud of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be proud of Jesus. Do not be ashamed. Encourage your children, you know, to not be ashamed of the word or the name or the person Jesus Christ. No, no matter how the world tries to twist and distort the person or the work or the words of Jesus Christ, you need not to be ashamed. Because that is our true creator or our father or our savior. Never be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself spoke this statement. He says that whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with his holy angels. Whoever is ashamed of me, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him. So, Paul was telling to young Timothy, therefore, do not be ashamed. Parents, we, we got to tell our children never to be ashamed of your belief. Right? They may ridicule you. They may laugh at you. Right? They may speak evil against you or against your faith. But let us bring it to the Lord in prayer. Right? Strengthen your child because this will be the test of our end times as Paul spoke in 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, you know, and continue on. In these end times, there will be difficult times arising. But then he says, Timothy, because of your faith that you have been receiving when you were a child, you are able to stand. And these scriptures Holy Scriptures is going to make you wise unto salvation. And the Lord is going to make you wise in this end time. If you are not wise, then you are otherwise. Be careful, okay? We need to be wise at this end time. For the past week, as I was preparing this message, some news surfaced to me, and I look at this present world that we are living. I'm talking about Canada also. Right? Um, this young girl at the age of 12 years old, 
She died a month ago, but only two days ago, they released the news that she died of an overdose of drug. You know, uh, fentanyl is a killer in Canada right now. It, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, 12 years old girl. How old is she? 12 years old. It just creates lots of um, sadness in one sense. Then, of course, we read the news about how in, um, what, in, in Idaho school, grade, what, grade 6, only 12 years old, uh, she brought a, a handgun to school and shoot people. 12 years old. We, we have a great responsibilities to reach out to our kids. I said it again, uh, you know, Casey is doing a great job. Let's give N, you know, our support. You know, but, uh, I, I believe in reaching out to the kids when they are young. Pray for her, pray for her ministry. You know, so nearby, I, I, I do a prayer walk. I walk around the Josh Washington School on Friday. I say, God, look at this Josh Washington, you know, one of the great, to me, he's a great president of America, a believer of God, and they want to remove that name. I hope not so. I pray for the young kids, you know. I pray for Pastor Jonathan Lawn, giving give wisdom to turn this school upside down again. Amen, Pastor Jonathan? Yeah. And they, they need Jesus. They need God. Honestly, they need God. Uh, we've got to do it, do it together as a church. Um, not me, but not Jonathan, but all of us. Let us put our hands together as Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. We were doing it together. I'd like to conclude with this story about, we all know about, you, you all heard this story before about how Susanna Wesley raise up, some say 17 kids, or at least 17 to 19 kids. And um, she still have plenty of time to pray and impact her children. She may not impact all, but uh, at least she impacted two persons, right? They turned England upside down. His name is, the names are John, Wesley and Charles Wesley. It's, it's a mother influenced. John and Charles Wesley, you know. Of course, we all know John Wesley, and the holiness preacher, and started a movement called the Methodist Movement. How they have impacted a nation because of a mother. How she taught her children to walk in the ways of the Lord, to fear the Lord, to walk in his commandment. So this morning, I, I want to especially want to honor mothers. Thank you for caring for your children, feeding them, helping them. And as for young children, revere your mother. The word revere means fear your mother. <laughs> Be afraid. That's the word means. Be afraid of your mother. Be af Honor your mother. Love her. I'm speaking to the children here. Bless your mother. You know, speak kindly to your mother. Respect your mother. Pray for your mother. Communicate with your mother. Enjoy her presence, right? She's never, never intruding your privacy. She did, it, she did it because she's concerned. She cares for you. She wants the best in your life. Amen. Shall we all rise? And, um, I want the mothers, if you're the mothers, can you come out and space up?
16. Uh, I just want to honor them. Mothers, you know, if you just come to the front here and just spend.